theyeshiva.net. We're up to Davov Omud Beis on the top. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six lines from the top, Davov Omud Beis. Well, Omer Rabbi Yitzchak, yeah? Rabbi Yitzchak said, Omer Rabbi Yitzchak, Rabbi Yitzchak said, powerful, powerful idea, if a person tells you, Yagati v'loy matzasi al tamen, if a person says, Yagati, I toiled. Is that how he translates? I toiled? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, if a person tells you, Yagati, I labored, but I was not successful. Al-Tamen, do not believe him. Next, Yagati, I did not labor, but I was successful. Al-Tamen, don't believe him. If he says, Yagati Umatsasi, I labored and I was successful, then Tamen, then you should believe him. Rashi says, Yagati, Yagati B'tayra, I labored in Tayra, but I was not successful. I tried, I tried, I worked hard, nothing happened, don't believe him. <laughs> if he says, I was very successful, but no labor, there was no Yagi, I'm good. It was fast, it was swift, I'm a chayet, don't believe him. Somebody says, Yagati, um, Matsasi, I labored and I was successful. I found Matsasi, I found. Oh, Tamin, you should believe. And what the Yitzchak is really telling us is that the, the empowerment of a, of a human being, what a person is. In other words, without Yagiya, I will not find. But with Yagiya, to say Yagati, Veloy Matsasi, is equally false as saying, Lo Yagati, um, Matsasi. Yagati Yomatsasi, I labored and I found Tamin, I believe. It says in Mefarshim, interesting expression, he uses Yagati Umatsasi. Yagiya is labor, right? Toil, Haravanya in Yiddish. Matsasa comes from the word Matsya, you find something. How do people usually find a Matsya? Through labor? What's a Matsya? Huh? The Gemara says, Hesachadas. The, the definition of a metzia, you learn Eilam metzia, you're walking in the street and you find whatever you find, you labor it. If you labor it, it's not called a metzia. Everybody knows they say in business, right? I got a call, it was mamish a metzia. What means a metzia? There's things that happen in business because you negotiated and you cultivated a relationship for 15 years. <laughs> and then the guy calls you back afterwards and he says, you know what? I'll sell you the product from China. That's not called a metzia. I only worked 15 years for this relationship. Metzia means out of the blue, out of the blue. A metzia, I found it. So one second. It's l'chayda the opposite here. Yagata umatsasa is not a metzia. It's yigiyah, that's his point. Lo yagata umatsasa al tamen. So the pshat is, that's really what Rabbi Yitzchak is saying. That through yagata, you're going to reach not only that which you reach logically through yagiyah. Through yagata, you'll have also umatsasa. You understand? Through your gata, you'll also find things that you couldn't prepare for, that are not commensurate with the level of labor. Sometimes what you get, what is it? What you put in, you take out. <laughs> right? What you put in, that's what you get out. That's not matzasa. The chiddush here is that through your gear, through labor and toil, or matzasa, you will also discover things that are completely beyond what you could have achieved through your labor. Right, right, yeah. As somebody once said, a great golfer, I think, once said, what did he say? They asked him, what's success? What's the... What makes you a successful uh, athlete or sportsman or artist, whatever it is? A pianist, I think, a pianist. What makes a great musician? He says, he said something of the nature. He says, it's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift from above. But somehow the gift comes out after 10,000 hours of practice. <laughs> he said, it's a gift. But to tune into the gift, you need Yagata. It's also interesting the expression, Yagata v'loy matzasa al tamen, and lo Yagata matzasa tamen. I once saw a diuk, al tamen, even with emune, it won't work. <laughs> in other words, sometimes you say, okay, logically not. But in emune, emune deals with things that are not logical. He says, even in the realm of emune, 
if there was lo yagati or matzasi al tamen, even in the realm of amuna, or the other way around, yagati v'lo matzasi al tamen, even even in the realm of amuna. <coughs> There's also a chesedish I think, from the Kotzke Rebbe or the Svasemes, that yagati uh, v'loy matzasi al tamin or lo yagati matzasi al tamin is that there was a lack of amuna. That was the problem. <laughs> there was a lack of amuna in his ability for success. Says the Gemara Hanemili. This is all bedivrei Torah. This is all in words of Torah. Avol b'masa matan. When it comes to business, sayate hu min shmaya. Over here, Hatzlocha depends on help from heaven. In other words, he's not trying to say that you don't need to work to make a living. That's not what he's saying. Perhaps there are those souls, Harbayasu Kirajbi, Kirabishmal, also Biyadan, Harbayasu Kirajbi, Vale also Biyadan. But the point is, a person has to do his Ishtadlus for Parnasa. But sometimes you work and work and work, yagati, 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 and we all know this, but you get what you're supposed to get. Not a penny more than what was cuts of what was established from heaven that the person should get. That's his point. In other words, when it comes to, 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 to business, it's sayatum and sayatum and shmai. Well, the divide taida layamaran, even by taida, ella lechidudi. This is speaking about lechidudi, meaning sharpening somebody's mind but to remember it to establish the learning it should stay in your mind you also need special help from heaven as Rashi says it's a special to be able to retain there's the Yagato Matsasa to understand, to go deeper, to appreciate Lichidude, to sharpen. Lichidude means sharpen, like Chad, Chad Vichalak, to sharpen a person's minds, to understand. But Luk Megirsa, to be able to retain all the infinite information of Torah, this Rashi says you can have Yegiya and not be Maitse. It's interesting, Rashi doesn't say the other way around. In other words, Rashi only says the one possibility exists, not the other one. There's no such a thing, a person remembering without Yegiya. You can have Yegiya and not remember without the Sayyat Adishmai, but he doesn't say the opposite, which is very fascinating. Rashi only says one way. This is one of the Pefarshim, the Rifin, and Yaakov brings this Diyuk in Rashi. Vabar Rabbi Yitzhak Rabbi Yitzhak said, If you see a wicked person, which means the hour is uh, smiling to him. What does it mean the hour is smiling to him? It means, you know, he's having a uh, a good run. They translate it here. You see a wicked person who's enjoying a good fortune. The hour is smiling. Shah is the hour. In other words, he's he's having a good run for his money. Things are going well. Alt is garabai. So Rabbi Yitzchuk said, do not entice him, do not contend with him, don't fight with him, don't provoke him. Shenemar. Even though he's not, uh, you know, the best of people. Shenemar. Yeah. Life is smiling at him. The hour, the hour is smiling at him. Tomorrow things may change, but uh, there's no mitzvah to get into a fight. Okay, you have to know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Says, the Pasuk says in Tehillim and in Mishle, Al-Tishar Bamireyim. Al-Tishar Bamireyim means do not contend, do not provoke, do not like evoke and trigger and fight with Mireyim, Mireyim from the word Ra, with people who are afflicting negativity. They're not good people. V'loyoyt furthermore l'shadrach of matzlichin. His endeavors at this moment will probably be successful. Shanemar the Pasuk says, Al yachilu drach of his ways are always successful. Not only that, he may emerge victorious in court. Your judgments are far removed from him. He may even witness the downfall of his enemies. All his foes, he blows at them. Like basically, Rashi says, with a puff, he knocks them out. It's basically a time that life is smiling at him. So therefore, because the Pasuk says this in Tehillim, Al-Tizchar Bamereim, because it's Yechilu Drachov B'chaleis, it's a time of success. Marim Ishpatechem Inegdoi, judgment is removed from him, and Kol of Yafiach Behem, he blows 
a mere puff against his oppressors and he's successful, Rabbi Yitzchak's advice is, do not fight this man. You're allowed to contend and trigger the wicked in this world. Shenemar the Pasik says in Mishle, Proverbs 28. Those who forsake, abandon Taira, they praise the wicked. Those who guard Taira, they adhere to Taira, they contend with them. They're not afraid. They're ready to put up a fight. They don't surrender and flatter them and, and, and give themselves over. That's what Rabbi Shimon ben Yechai taught. And then he continues. V'im and I'll tell you even more. If uh, I, I sorry, I skipped. V'tanya, we learned a brayse. Reb Deistoy bar Moshe, number Reb Deistoy, son of Moshe, said, "Mutal is guys bar Shoyim by Lamaza." You're allowed to contend against the wicked of this world. V'im lechash chadam leimer, and if someone whisper to you, lachash is whisper like lochesh ba'aznov. I whisper in your ear. Somebody whispers in your ear, and you know what he says? Al tischar ba'mereim. There's a pasuk in Tehillim, Tehillim lamed zayin. Don't fight evil people. Al tekane ba'isa avla. Don't be zealous against people who do bad things. Don't do it. Leave it alone. If somebody whispers, you know what you should tell them? If somebody tells you these words, then tell them, The only one who brings these psukim as a proof is somebody whose conscience is smiting him. If you don't have a good conscience, if you think that you're not a good person, that's how you interpret these psukim. Don't stand up against injustice because really deep down you see that person in yourself. This is very deep. That's what that's what he's explaining, Reb is saying. It's only if your heart yourself is not uh, wholesome. So then you say, you know what, leave it alone. Shh, shh, shh. Just go somewhere else. The truth is that's not pshat. Al tischar b'mereim liyas kamereim. Al tischar b'mereim in Tehillim Lamed Zayin doesn't mean don't fight against them. It means don't compete with them. You're not on the same track. Next, one second. Al tekane boy say avla doesn't mean don't be zealous. It means don't be jealous. Liyas kai say avla. You don't want to be like them. That's the point. In other words, the same pasuk you can interpret in two opposite ways. Al tischar b'mereim, don't fight, don't don't trigger them. Al tekane, don't be a kanoi, don't be zealous, let it go. He says that's only if you have yourself incomplete uh, stuff. But if not, if your conscience is clear, al tischar means not don't trigger them, don't fight them, don't compete with them. Tacharut, you know what tacharut is? Competitiveness. We're playing ball together. We're wrestling. Don't go on the same field like them. Don't al tekane means don't be jealous. Kano, kanos in, in Lashon Kodesh could mean two things. Like by Pinchas, Bekanoyas Kinosi, right? He, was, he wasn't jealous of Cosby and Zimri having relations. He was zealous, like a Kanoi. And Kana, we all know, is loy, Kina. Kina is jealousy. Alte Kane means don't be zealous. That's only if you your conscience is a little dirty. But if you're clear, Alte Kane means don't be jealous, not don't be zealous. Be zealous, don't be jealous. Zealous, not jealous. That works. Right? It's an interesting Gemara. You're, yeah, you're not... Uh, we all know the situation. You see you see crimes in your midst. We all know situations. We, in the last few years, especially in a particular area, where you know people in the communities have been seen to uh, silence certain criminals and crimes, right? What does it have to do? So he's saying when your heart is clear, when your conscience is clear, you don't stay quiet. When not, then you look at the Pasuk and you say the Torah says to, 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 to be quiet. It's a very deep psychological truth. He's quieting himself, exactly. He's talking to himself, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Nishke Ferlich. Of course Nishke Ferlich, it's you. <laughs> if it's not you, it's Geferlich. People whose behavior is, 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 is bad. No? 
don't know if he's talking about a murderer. I think he's just talking about, you know, people who are... Uh, huh? No, I wouldn't say stubborn. But, you know, their, their behavior is just... Uh, they're engaged in, in negative acts. I mean, to what level? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So don't 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 be like them. The Oimer and the Pasik says in Mishli, Al Yikane Libcha Bechatoyim, Kiyim Biyiras Hashem Kalayim. That's the end of the Pasik, Mishli Chav Gimel. It doesn't mean you shouldn't be Mekane and Chatoyim only in Yiras Hashem. You should be zealous against. It's talking about jealousy. Don't be jealous of sinners. Rather, you should want to emulate those who fear God. So how do we reconcile Rabbi Yitzchak? And Rashbi and Reb Doistoy. Like Kasha is not a contradiction. Habe Mila de Dei, Habe Mila de Shmaya. Reb Yitzchak was talking about your own issues. If it affects your own thing, in other words, let's say there's a material dispute and he's a Russia and the hour is smiling at him, stay away. Reb Shimma Yechai is talking about Mila de Shmaya. Mila de Shmaya means not your own personal stuff, but things that are affecting heaven, heavenly affairs. In other words, when you're defending justice, you're defending Torah, you're defending mitzvahs, you're defending morality, he says, don't be scared just because it's it two separate things. Sometimes there's a personal issue that we're having that's affecting, yeah, my own bank account. So he says here, the hour is smiling, stay quiet. Reb Shem Bayechai is talking about Mila Deshmaya, heavenly affairs. Iba Yisema, another way of looking at it is Hava Haba Mila Dedei. Both are talking about your own personal stuff, your physical stuff. Like Kasha, Habit Sadi Gomer, Habit Sadi Kshene Gomer. One is a Sadi Gomer, you're completely wholesome, stand up to him. Sadi Kshene Gomer, then Rabbi Yitzchak says, don't stand up to him. That's what the Gemara gives a second answer. Now, what's the definition of a Sadi Gomer and a Sadi Kshene Gomer here? Huh? What's the difference? The Gemara doesn't say, ah? Huh? Uh, <laughs> very good. So, um, <laughs> it's interesting. Rabbi Kiva Eger, Rabbi Kiva Eger in, uh, in Gilyan Ashas, Masech de Brachas, Brachas Dav Zayin, he brings us Zohar, Rabbi Kiva Eger in Parshas Pinchas, who says, Tzadik Gomer is a Tzadik who didn't do Ra even in his first Gilgal. And a tzaddik she'ene gomor is somebody who did run the first Gilgal and now he has to fix it. He has to fix it. That's what he says. He's a tzaddik, but it's ene gomor because he's fixing from a previous Gilgal. That's why Rabbi Vega says in Masech the Brachas. Just wanted to mention. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm a kulum tzaddikim, but like we learned in the Maimah yesterday, there's a tzaddik b'shem ha-toyar, there's the ultimate tzaddik, and then there's, everybody's a tzaddik. It's different when you say the word tzaddik, it could be in a different context. Dhamma Rabuna Rabuna said, My Diksiv the Pasik says in Chavakik, Loma Sak, Loma Sabid Baigdim, Tahrish Bevala Rasha Tzadik Mimenu. The Navi says in Chavakik, why do you look upon them that deal treacherously and remain silent when the wicked swallow up one who is more righteous than he? So he says, he doesn't say when the wicked swallow up. Somebody who's a tzaddik, somebody who's tzaddik mimenu, more righteous than he. Tzaddik mimenu baileya, tzaddik amreine baileya. He can only swallow up somebody who's more righteous than himself, but that person also has stuff going on. But somebody who's completely righteous, he could never swallow up. And that's what Reb Sharon ben Yechai was talking about. That when you're completely wholesome in a particular area, then you never have to be afraid. And I think also, emotionally, we can understand this maybe on a lower level. And that is, when you're fighting something, if you're struggling with other stuff, then you're not sure if the fight is about them or the fight is about you. In other words, maybe it's your own unresolved issues that are being fought. So he says, you know, you go look in the mirror. If you are in this area, Tzadik Gomor, yeah, then you are really focusing on the issue itself. The first answer and the second answer may not be so different. The first answer is depends it's about God or it's about you. The second answer is depends where you're holding in life. If you're completely pure in it, then it's going to come out in a completely different fashion because the purity will be there. It doesn't get personal. You know, how do you disagree with people without becoming disagreeable? You know that art? Disagree without becoming disagreeable. In other words, I disagree with you, 
but I never have to avoid you. I never have to look away from you. I don't have to start hate you, hating you. I don't have to judge you, even though I disagree without becoming disagreeable. That's a tremendous art in life because it's completely not personal. You're not triggering something inside of me, meaning you're getting me angry and therefore when I'm screaming at you, yeah, it becomes very, very personal because I'm dealing with something. It's coming from a very wholesome place. It's a completely different way of, you're not, a, you're not an oppositional person. You guys know what I'm talking about? Huh? You have mastered that art? It's only the other person's right. <laughs> you have to be willing to... It's very hard. Huh? It's very hard. Huh? It's very interesting also because when you, when you do that in the, in the hard way, it feels very uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good. Of course, you go home and you're depressed. Of course, you know right away. Yeah. It's very smooth, yeah. Your conscience is home. Huh? Only through Bittal, yeah. What's up, Muhammad? Do we stand up to defend someone's honor? For, for what? Do, do we stand up to for someone's cover? If it's, if it's, so someone comes upstairs and says uh, about somebody else? Yeah, but I'm saying, for sure you stand up for somebody's honor if it's just, but I'm saying here he's talking about even somebody that the hour is smiling at him. Meaning he's, you know, he's... Uh, He's, uh, he's, he, he's running high. These, these are the good days for him. That's the Chiddush. And then he says, Another explanation is, Reb Shimon Bayechoi wasn't talking about a case where the hour is smiling at him. He's talking about a regular case. When you see somebody who's having tremendous Hatzlacha, then the Yitzchak is saying, do not, do not trigger him. Do not, uh, do not contend with him. Because that's apparently not the proper the proper calling at the moment. Amar Ula, Ula said, Italia Shalav Yavam. We were talking before about different cities discussed in the Tanakh, especially Caesarea and Rome, which is the ear of Edom, Esav. We spoke about Germany, Germania, Germania, the dangers of Germany. I titled yesterday's Shir on the yeshiva.net, uh, the Talmud's warning about Nazi Germany 1,700 years ago, which I thought was very appropriate. I took out the word Nazi because the Gemara doesn't say the word Nazi. The Talmud's warning about Germany 1,700 years ago. So now the Gemara gets back to this discussion and finishes this, this section. Italia shall yavan zekrach gadol shereimi. Italia shall yavan. Italia of yavan. This is the great city of Rome. Basically, the Gemara is saying that Rome is the large city, the center of the country we know as Italy. Italia Shalavon, which was initially built and under the Greek domain. That's why it's called Yavon. But ultimately, Yavon, the Greek empire, was defeated by the Persian empire and ultimately was succeeded by Rome, the Roman empire, and they, their center became Italy, which is, of course, Rome is a city in Italy. And Edom, as we said, is considered the represented by Rome. Zekrach Godel shall roimi. Its size was 300 parsa by 300 parsa. 300 parsa length, 300 parsa width. Now let's understand what that is. A parsa is 4 mil. So 300 parsa would be 369, 1200 mil. As I told you, a mil is approximately a kilometer. Approximately. Either a little more or a little less. Not mamish, but approximately. That means that we're saying that the size of it, Italy or the size of Rome is 300 parsa by 300 parsa would be 1,200 mil by 1,200 mil. So that would be approximately 1,200 kilometers. 1,200 kilometers this way and 12, in the length and 1,200 kilometers in the width. The exact measurement, he says in the Art Scroll footnote, is 1,200 mil is between 1,152 kilometers to 1,392 kilometers. So 1,200 is somewhere in the middle. Between 1,592 kilometers and 1,392 kilometers. Uh, what's the size of Italy? The boot. I know that it's a boot. Okay, you could Google, you can Google the size of Italy and let us know. It has 365 marketplaces corresponding to the number of days in the solar year. Remember the Roman calendar follows 
the solar year. You see that earlier when the Gemara spoke about the sun and the moon, I asked, how does it come into Masech to Megillah? Right? It looks like it's mamish random. But you see here that the theme comes back. Before we learned that they have 365 chieftains, chief, chief lords. Here they have 365 markets. Why? The solar calendar has 365 days. That's when the sun finishes its orbit. The cotton shebekulim, the smallest of all the marketplaces, is Meichreyofis, is that of poultry vendors. Yeah? What's the size of the whole Italy today? Hundred and hundred and sixteen thousand square miles. Italy. Thousand by thousand will make you one thousand square miles. Miles is almost two kilometers. Uh, One point six kilometers is a mile. Now remember, we're talking here the Roman Empire. We're talking the Roman Empire. Yes, we're 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 we're, we're not talking today. We're talking Italy is a country and a member of NATO. It has its uh, and Rome is Rome. But this really was the symbol, Krach Gadol Shalroim, it's basically the capital of the Roman Empire. Huh? Okay. You have poultry vendors, we have Yeshisha Samil, or Shisha Samil. It measures the smallest market, 16 mil by 16 mil. Basically, the smallest market is around 16 kilometers by 16 kilometers, which is a very big marketplace, to say the least. Interesting king. And the king goes every day of the year to one of the markets in order to eat. He dines. Every marketplace has its restaurants and cafes. So 365 days, he visits another market. I guess he didn't have much to do. So this is the king. What happens next? Anybody who lives in the city, even if he wasn't born there, gets a stipend from the king's palace. And anyone who was born in the city, even if he doesn't live there, takes a stipend from the king's palace. There are 3,000 bathhouses here. In Rome, and 500 windows direct the smoke of the bathhouses upwards away from the city walls, which means the chimneys had to be very tall not to darken and harm the city walls. One side of the city is bounded by the ocean. Another side by mountains and hills. Another side by a barrier of iron. Another side by pebbly ground and a swamp. Those are the four borders of the capital of the Roman Empire, Krach Gadol Shoremi in Italy. Okay. Says the Mishnah, I saw a beautiful word from the Satmer Rebbe, from the Satmer Rebbe, Rebbe Yoilish Teitelbaum, Zechroin Levracha. He says that we learned yesterday, the Gemara proved from the Psukim that all the amphitheaters of Rome and all of the drinking uh, centers of Rome and the circuses of Rome and the gladiators of Rome are going to turn into Bate Knesias, Bate Medrashas, right? So he says, that's Pshat. David HaMelech says in Tehillim, uh, in Kukuf Yutes, Chishavtai, uh, you have a Tehillim over there? Chishavti Drachai, Raglai El Edo Yisecha. I thought about my ways, and then my feet turned me to your laws. So David HaMelech says, the Medrash says, David HaMelech says, B'chol yoyim v'yoyim, every day, my mind, I wanted to go to theaters, and clubs, and carcassois. I wanted to go to theaters and drinking pl- parties, but then my feet would take me to the base Medrash. That's what David HaMelech says in Tehillim. So this is quite a interesting... In other, I was thinking always of going to the theaters, but my feet somehow slapped me to the base Medrash. So what's Pshat? So there's a lot of different interpretation, a famous part from the Baal Shem, to tell the Yaakov Yosef, but I saw from the Sat Rebbe, he says in Divri Yoyal, that it's based on this Gemara. That basically David, David is Melech Yisrael. David is called David Malka Meshicha. David is the father of Meshicha. He says, David said, every day I was waiting to go to the theaters because I wanted the theaters to become Bate Medrash. That's what my hope, every day I should be, I don't have to go to the base Medrash, I want to go to the theaters. That's what I'm looking for. He was looking for world transformation. 
Not a very beautiful word. Huh? MetLife Stadium. He wanted to go to MetLife Stadium. Yeah, very good. I just thought I liked it, huh? Oh, why we have to know how impressive Rome is. So the Marsha says a beautiful word. It's based on the story at the end of Maseches Makos. You know the story, Rabbi Akiva went with his friends and they came, I think, a hundred kilometers from Rome. They heard, Koil Hamoina Shal Roimi. Right? And everybody started to cry, all of his friends. They said, why are you crying? So uh, they said, because look at your Shalayim is, is, is in the abyss. Right? Hadoim Beis Selekenu is Charev. It's been destroyed. And Rome is, is uh, on top of the world, the glory. I guess it fits into the previous Gemara of Shama Sachekes line. Rabbi Kiva was laughing. They said, why are you laughing? He said, Im if this is what life could be for those who are immoral and who transgress his will, yeah, what is life? What could life look like and what will life look like for Oyser In other words, if this is Rome in its height, how impressive, how beautiful, how, how dazzling, so then you can only understand the schar of Oyser That's what Rabbi Akiva said. So Rabbi Marshall says that's what the Gemara wants to tell you. How impressive Rome was to understand how amazing Yerushalayim is going to be. On a deeper level, it's explained in the Kutatari, and Rebekah was saying something deeper. All pleasure in the world comes from Hashem. That's the source of pleasure. Rome has a lot of pleasure. If this is the type of pleasure they have that trickles down after thousands of levels and filters from Hashem, and this is how pleasurable it is, imagine if you go to the source of all these pleasures, yeah? Allah has come of a kama. If this is what it looks like, if this is, you know, if this is what the garbage of the chasana looks like, you can understand what the shmogas board is like. You know, when you look in the garbage of the shmogas board, right? When the garbage is filled with, with, with if you could, if you could sustain yourself for a year from the garbage can, so you can understand what the what the shmogas board looks like. And they get that it's a trickle, a trickle, a trickle from the source. So la oisir it's saying who are tuning in to the source of pleasure. Allah has come of a kama. The Hesher Baran. This is how the Balatanya teaches the Gemara. Ah, huh? how does this come in the Megillah? I guess we're uh, we're trying to uh, we deal with Haman and Amalek. Haman came from Amalek, and Amalek was a son of Esav. This is the father of Edom, which is Rome. No, Pashtus. Huh? The Gemara says, Reb Masi ben Cheresh made a yeshiva in Rome. Reb Masi ben Cheresh made a yeshiva. Okay, so the Mishnah of Aiter. Next Mishnah, Karu is HaMegillah Badr Yishin of Inesabra Ashana Karu Noisa Badr Sheni. You read the Megillah, you read the Megillah in the first Adar, and then the year suddenly had Ibur. It became a leap year. So what do you do? You have to read it again on Adar Sheni. Remember, this is talking about the time when they used to be Mekadaj the Chaydish every single month based on the new moon. And then they used to decide every few years if there's going to be a leap year. There were different considerations that caused Bezdin to add another month. Bezdin could decide this till the end of the month of Adar. Till the end of the month of Adar you could decide it. So what happened? They did Purim, Yudalit Adar. A week later, Bezdin says, you know what, we need a second Adar. What happened? So the Gemara Mishnah says you have to redo it. You have to read the Megillah a second time that year because... It's other Shani now. It's a fascinating example. Of course, today, this wouldn't exist because now that we follow the years and the months based on a system that was established by a man named Hillel and his Bezdin, they created a calendar. He was the 10th generation of the original Hillel. There was Hillel the elder who lived before Chormash and he was a 10th generation of the original Hillel. And he was the great-grandson of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, the great-grandson of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, he fixed the calendar. So we always know in the beginning of the year if it's going to be a leap year or not. So therefore, our Mishnah would not be relevant only in a case when somebody made a mistake and read the Megillah in other Rishon, because I didn't realize, perhaps, maybe I forgot that it's a leap year, maybe I thought the halacha is you have to read it in other Rishon, so then the halacha would still apply. But in terms of a community, this would not be very, very relevant because we know the leap years in advance. Says the Mishnah, bin other Rishon, other Shane, Elikriya, Megillah, Matanis, There is no difference between the first other and the second other in terms of halacha besides 
reading of Megillah and Matanas Lavyoinim gifts to the poor, which you have to do in the second other. And if you did it in the first other, you did not fulfill your obligation. In terms of other mitzvahs connected to other, which the Gemara is going to explain, there wouldn't be a difference when it comes to the Megillah and Matanas Lavyoinim. You cannot do it on Yudalad Adar Rishon. And if you did, you have to redo it on Yudalad Adar Shani when it comes to the Megillah and it comes to Matanas Lavyoinim. And the Gemara is going to explain. What do you mean? Basically, it seems like what the mission is saying when it comes to the four parshias, we all know that in the month of Adar, we read four special parshias, right? The Shabbos before Rishchidosh Adar or Rishchidosh Adar, we read parshias Shkalem from parshias Kisisa. The Shabbos before Purim, we read what? Parshas Zacher. Then... Then we read Parshas Parah, one of the Shabbosim after Zachar, we read Parshas Parah, about the Parah Adumah from Parshas Chukas. And then the Shabbos before Rish Chodesh Nisan, or Rish Chodesh Nisan, we read Parshas HaChodesh. So the Indians say the Parshas is Zev Shavan. It seems that both months would be identical, meaning even if you read it in other Rishon, you would do well, fine. Shkalem, Zachar, Parah, and HaChodesh. Because the Mishnah says the only difference is Lagabe what? Purim itself, Megillah and Matanas Lavyayin, but other things, it would seem, would be fine. Frek the Gemara, money must listen. We now have a problem. Who is the author of this Mishnah? The Mishnah doesn't have a name. So we're going to say it's one of the Tanoim who believed this, but we're going to study a Brisa. The Brisa is going to give us three opinions, and none of the three opinions fit our Mishnah, which means we're struggling to find the author of our Mishnah. Money must listen. Not Tanakama, the first Tanu is going to be mentioned. Not Rebeleza, the son of Rabbi Yossi, and not Rabbi Shem The Tanya will enter Brisa. Listen carefully. Huh? Tanakama means that the Brisa is going to have the first opinion which doesn't have a name. So we, when we don't have a name, what do we call him? We call him Tanakama, the first Tana of the Brisa. Of that Brisa, yeah. We, we, we would have loved to use a name, but we don't have a name for Tanakama, so we're saying Tanakama. Yeah, because we have Tanakama also. Right, but he means in the Brisa that we're going to quote the first opinion that was said by a Tana, that's called Tana Kama. Tana Kama means the first Tana, meaning the first opinion of that Brisa. Yeah. The Tanya Karu is Samagila Badr Risha in Venisabra Shana Karna is a Badr Shani. A Brisa teaches us if you read the Megillah in the first order and the year became a leap year, you have to read it in the second order. Okay, all is good. Shakal Mitzvah Shana Gaz Bashani Noya Gaz Bridishan. Chutzma Mikra Megillah. Because all mitzvahs. That you do in the second other, you can also do in the first other. Even though you're supposed to do it in the second, first other is good enough. You'll fulfill your obligation. Besides, reading the Megillah. Reading the Megillah, you can only fulfill the obligation in other Shani, not other ish. That's opinion number one. Does this match with our Mishnah? We'll see in a moment. Rebelezer, Rabbi Yosi, I'm opinion number two. Ain Kairin Isa Badr Ashani. Fascinating, you don't read the Megillah and other Shani. Shekol mitzvah shenayag is b'sheni, noyag is b'rishin. All mitzvahs that you could do the second month, you could also do the first month, including the reading of the Megillah. Wow. Reb Shem Ben Gamliel, I mean, Meshem Rabbi Yaisi. Reb Shem Ben Gamliel had a different tradition in the name of Rabbi Yaisi. What does he say? Af kairin oisa bader sheni. You would have to read the Megillah again. Another sheni should call mitzvah shenagas b'sheni einagas b'rish. The mitzvahs that apply to the second month, all of them do not apply the first month, and therefore, Reb Shimon Ben Gamliel says you have to read it again in the second month. For shavin, all three tanoim agree behespedu betaynes shasudim bazel bazel. When it comes to giving a eulogy or fasting on the fourteenth and fifteenth of other, that other rishin and other sheni are identical. Meaning, what we call today Purim cotton, Yudalit other rishin and Tesvav other rishin, and Yudalit other sheni, Tesvav other sheni over there, they're the same. That we don't fast on Yudalit and Tesvav even of the first month. Excellent question. Excellent question. What's the difference between Hashem and Gamliel and Tanakama? They both say you have to read the Megillah the second month. How do I know it's such a good question? How do I know? Take a look at the next words. Reb Shem and Ben Gamliel, I know Tanakama. Ah? Ganz git? Binarenu biskenenu? Reb Shem and Ben Gamliel, I know Tanakama. Reb Shem and Ben Gamliel is Tanakama. Same thing. They both say that what? That Mikra Megillah is only an other Shani, not other Rishon. What is an argument? Amar of Papa say the Parshiyas Ikebe Nayu. There is an argument. 
Not about Megillah, but the four parshas. Tanakama sava lechatchila b'sheni v'yavad b'rishin avod b'arma mikra Megillah. Tanakama holds everything you do in other sheni. But if you read the four parshas in other rishin, avod, it's done. B'arma mikra Megillah, besides Megillah, da'afal gav de kara b'rishin kara b'sheni. Megillah, even if you read it on the first, you have to redo it on the second. That's Tanakama. Even Megillah you could do in the first month. In other words, he holds Dafka Adarish. You have to do it first month. He's more extreme. He says everything you have to do in the second month, even the Arba Parshis. So you have three opinions. The first opinion makes a distinction. First opinion says what? The mitzvahs that you do in the second month, you could do it also in the first month, besides Megillah, which means the four parshias, if I read it, Adarishan, it's good. Megillah you have to redo. That's Tanakama. That's in the middle of the road. Rebbe Lezeb Rebbe Yossi is on the other extreme. He says, no, it's, it's Adarishan. That's the month. Even Megillah you have to do Adarishan. That's L'Chatchila, the time to do Megillah. Certainly the four parshias. That's the second opinion, Rebbe Lezer. Mamish, Mamish, the other extreme, Rebbe Lezer, Rebbe Yossi, that according to him, this man is day, month one. Okay? So therefore, Tanakam, so that's why Rebbe Lezer said, Kol mitzvah neges b'sheni neges b'rishin, everything that you said that belongs to the second month really belongs to the first month. Rebbe Shimon ben Gamliel is the third opinion. What's the third opinion? The third opinion is that everything is the second month. So you get the three. Tanakama holds you could divide. Megillah second, but everything else. Abba Parshi is first. Yeah. The second opinion, Rebbe Lezabir Rebbe Yossi says, the other extreme, everything is the first month. And Rebbe Shemeng Amlil says, everything is the second month. Even Abba Parshi is. Yeah, we'll get there in a moment. We'll get there in a moment. Yeah, good. If other edition passed, other edition passed. What if we didn't do Megillah and comes? Then, okay, he says, but this man was other edition. That's what he holds. You 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 missed you missed put you missed put him. You missed no no. It's not only but the event. That's the time. That's the time. That's what he means. It is no shani. Stop with your shani. Rishon is the month. That's the other. You're not yotze. You won't make a bracha. Maybe you should read that, but according to him, it's worthless. At which point they know there is a, a Roshay? You saw the time. <laughs> Any <laughs> point? No, they could know a month before, but they may not. They may suddenly see, yeah, that uh, the Gemara gives an example. For example, it was a terrible winter. The bridges are down. There's mud everywhere. Nobody can get to Yerushalayim. Your or they see there's no sheep for the carbon Pesach. You have to wait another month. Or uh, spring. I mean, spring is not coming. Right, all these considerations. So sometimes you could know six months before, in terms of the calendar, but very often they had to make a decision on other after Purim. That was the problem. Yeah, they always did that. That was the major consideration that Pesach should be spring. That was first and foremost. But there were a lot of other accessories. Why would we do it this year? We could wait till another year, and then they could. Why this year? We could have done it last year. We could do it next year. They had some leeway, so they had other considerations to be able to make this cheshbon, and then they decided to make a leap year. Today, of course, it's all fixed. Every two, three years, you have a leap year, so there's no surprises. But then there was a surprise. Then there was surprise. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the Gemara says, so according to this, so you understand, Isaac, the difference between Gamlet and Akama? So according to this money, who does our Mishnah follow? Let's go through all the three. E Tanakama, Kashem Atonis. If it's Tanakama, we have a problem with Matonis Lavyoinim. Our Mishnah says Matonis Lavyoinim is only on the second month. Tanakama said all the mitzvahs can be done the first month, besides Megillah. It seems like Matonis Lavyoinim, if you did it the first month on Purim, you download other Rish and you're good. Fine. E de Belezer, but Rabbi Yossi, Kashem Mikra Megillah. Can't be the second opinion because Rabbi Lezer says you read the Megillah the first month and our Mishnah says you don't, the second month. Either Pshim Ben Gamliel, Kasha say the Parshias. Pshim Ben Gamliel, Pshim Ben Gamliel says even the Parshias, you have to read the second month, and our Mishnah says no, only Megillah and Matanas Lavanim is the second month, but the Parshias you could be Yoy to the first month, at least be the Yevit. So, our Mishnah is a fourth opinion? Very strange. The Brysa has three opinions, and our Mishnah doesn't fit with anybody. 
You could say our mission is a fourth Tana without a name. We don't know who it is. But the Braisa has three opinions. It would be much more difficult to say that. So the Gemara says, La'olam Tana Kama. Our Mishnah was authored by the same Tana of the Braisa, the first Tana. When our Mishnah says that the second month you have to do Megillah and Matana Slavenim, it's not a contradiction to the Tanakam of the Braisa. Tanakam of the Braisa also said Megillah has to be the second month. And when he meant Megillah, he meant also Matana Slavenim, because Ha Baha Talia. One depends upon the other. Matana Slavenim depends on the Megillah. Why? We learned before on the Avdalad Amid Beis. Why didn't they want Purim to be on Shabbos? What was the second reason? Because the poor people look up to the time of the Megillah when everybody comes to Shul. That's anybody's there for Matana Slav So one was always working with the other. He doesn't mean it depends that if you don't have a Megillah, you don't do Matana Slav Yoyinim. Yeah, Matana Slav is a separate mitzvah. But it means it always work together. So when he says you have to read the Megillah in the second month, he meant Matana Slav Yoyinim. Come together with the Megillah. So it's not a contradiction. The Tanakam and the Braise, just like the Tana and our Mishnah hold, you must have the second month for Megillah and Matana Slav Yoyinim. And the first month you can have the Arba Parshius like the Tanakama in the Mishnah. The Gemara says, Iboyseim, or if you wish, you could say, La'olam Rav Shem Ben Gamliel. Our Mishnah follows Rav Shem Ben Gamliel. I, Rav Shem Ben Gamliel, says the four parshiyas also have to be the first month. I'm sorry, also have to be the second month, and our Mishnah did not say that. Masnisen chisurim mechsur evahachiktani. Our Mishnah, you could say, it has to be read as though there was something missing, and fill in the gaps, meaning, this is what our Mishnah meant. The only difference between the two Purims is Mikra Megillah and Matana Slavyoyna. Meaning the Mishnah is talking about only the 14th of other. Our Nusach is Ein Bein Adir Rishon La Adir Sheni. What if the Mishnah would have said Ein Bein Yudalid Adir Rishon La Yudalid Adir Sheni? You wouldn't have a problem, right? Make believe, that's what the Mishnah says. Now, it's not a make believe. It means that's how you have to interpret the words of the Mishnah, as though it's missing the word Yudalid Adir, because the Mishnah was brief. He says, there's no difference between first Adir and second Adir. No, no, no. There's no difference between Yudalid of the first Adir and Yudalid of the second Adir. Halainian Hesped when it comes to the prohibition of eulogizing a corpse or fasting, they're both equal. But he's not talking about halachas that are not connected to the 14th of Adar. He's talking about halachas of Purim itself. Halachas of Purim itself, he's saying, Mikra Megillah Matanus in month two, Hesped and Tainus also month one. In terms of Arba Parshish, which is never on Yudalad Adar, it's Shabbos before Rishchidr, Shabbos before Purim, Parshish Para, Parshish Achidr, that he's not talking about which month, he's not getting into it. He could really believe, like Rabbi Shimon Ben that that also could be only the second month and not the first month. And if you did it the first month, you have to re-read the Arba Parshish in the second month. Amr Rebchiyah Barab and Amr Rebbe Yechanan, Hilchasek Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel, Sha'amr Meshim Rabbi Yaisi. The Allah is like Rav Shimon ben Gamliel in the name of Rabbi Yossi, that on a leap year, you read the Megillah only on the second month and you do not fulfill your obligation when you read it on the first month. And it seems like even Arba Parshius would be the same thing, that you have to read it in other other Sheni. Sha'amah Meshur, you read it in other Sheni, at least that is the opinion of most of the Poiskim, that even Arba Parshis has to be the second month, although I should just say that there are those few who believe that the halacha, like Rav Shimon Gamliel, is only talking about Mikra Megillah, and he's not discussing the issue of Arba Parshis. And over there, you would be yoy to the first month. It's not so clear in the Gemara if he's talking about both, although the Pashtus most say that he's talking about both. The reason he says Rav Shimon Gamliel, not Tanakama, is because, as we said, our Mishnah follows Rav Shimon Ben Gamliel, so that's why he says that Allah is like Rav Shimon Ben Gamliel, which would perhaps mean also the Arba Parshius, although some say that it's not the Arba Parshius, it's only about Mikra, Mikra Megillah. <coughs> now is the reason. Now is the reason. Now the Gemara is going to tell us the reason. Rashi told us in that phrase that if you're not in Purim one day, you're a Shoikh, you're a Oh. Why they... Why they the, why why they stopped with the Bnei Akfarim, yeah. you're going to say? Why they stopped with the Bnei Akfarim? That's why they canceled Bnei Akfarim, you're saying, because of Chametz. Okay. So let's see now, let's see. 
Amr Rabbi Yochan, Rabbi Yochanan says, Ushnei Mikra Echa Darshu. Rabbi Lezer and Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel both use the same Pasuk. They use the same Pasuk, even though they say opposite things. Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel says, only other Shani, and Rabbi Lezer says, only other Rishon. They use the same Pasuk. What's the Pasuk? Megillus Esther Perik Tes Pasuk Chafal, I'm going to read the whole Pasuk. The Pasuk says, Mardachai and Esther sent out letters pleading with the Jewish people to observe every single year, the day of 14 and the day of 15, every year and year. What does Bechol Shana Vashana teach us? As we learned before, every year the same like the previous year. Year after year after year, meaning it's the same way. Ma kol shana blazes rebbe yosi savar bechol shana v'shana ma kol shana v'shana other asamach l'shvat afkan other asamach l'shvat. The blazes says every year. When do you read the Megillah? When do you do Purim? Other that comes after Shvat, right? Shvat other. So there's a leap year. When should Purim be? Other that comes after Shvat, which is other ish. That's the way to do Bechol Shana V'Shana. If not, you're changing it from the previous year. You can't go to other two. You have to go to other one. Reb Shem Megam Liel says, Reb Shem Megam Liel says, Bechol Shana V'Shana. Ma Kol Shana V'Shana Adur HaSamach L'Nissen. Afkan Adur HaSamach L'Nissen. Every year, you do it on other right before Nissen. So this year, you also have to do it on other right before Nissen. Because if you would do it the first other, it's after Shvat, but it's not before Nissen. It's before other base. So they're using the same Bechol Shana V'Shana in an opposite way. He's focusing on Shvat. He's focusing on this. So wait, now we're stuck. Rabbi Shimon Gamliel didn't know that other comes after Shvat. Rabbi Lezer didn't know that other comes before Nisan. I mean, what is this? Stam, uh, you have to argue about everything. So there has to be a logic here. Why he chooses the Shvat and he chooses the Nisan. Why for him, being near Shvat is more important than being near Nisan. And for Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, being near Nisan is more important than being near Shvat. There has to be a, a deeper svara. It's very nice, but it doesn't satisfy the, the rational explanation for an argument here. I understand very gishmak. He says, I know you could learn it two ways. I know you could learn it. It should be near shvat or near nis, and I have to choose one of them. So now I'll put in a new idea. Ein mavirin ala mitzvah. Ein mavirin ala mitzvah means we don't we try not to let a mitzvah go. Right? When you have an opportunity to do a mitzvah, mitzvah abal yadcha, al tach mitzvah, we learn it from the word, ushmartem es ha in Parshas boy, you should guard the matzahs. So Chazal say, ushmartem es ha mitzvahs, because there's no vow, there's no nekudos in a Sefer Torah. So therefore, I could say the Megillah is ambiguous. The Megillah doesn't tell me what to do. The Megillah tells me, b'chol shana v'shana. I could learn it two ways. Either near shvat, or near Nisan. So which one should I choose? So I'll tell you, since Ein Mavir Nala Mitzvah, since we try not to overpass a mitzvah, so I have an opportunity to do Purim. So if I have an opportunity to do Purim in the first month of Adar, I'm going to say, that's the time to do it. That's his logic. Very nice. And that's why I say, Adar HaSamach L'Shvat. Because Bechol Shana V'Shana is ambiguous. I don't know what to do with it. So I'm bringing in Ein Mavir Nala Mitzvah, and I say, that's Pshat in Bechol Shana V'Shana. Right? But Reb Shem Ben Gamliel, my time. Why would Reb Shem Ben Gamliel alter that? Amir Reb Tavi, Reb Tavi said, Taimah that Reb Shem Ben Gamliel is mismach ge'ula le ge'ula adif. Reb Shem Ben Gamliel says there is a deep reason that Purim should be in the month of Adar. Because mismach ge'ula le ge'ula, to uh, join redemption to redemption is better. It's even better than Ein Mavirin Ala Mitzvah. The fact that Purim should come right before Pesach. Purim should come before Nisan. So we go from one gula, the gula of Purim, into the gula of Pesach is a much greater consideration even than Ein Mavirin Ala Mitzvah to pass over the first other. That's why I teach Bechol Shana V'Shana other before Nisan, not other after Shvat. Mismach gula gula. It's ready from Shana V'Shana before. It's a different thing. But it's the same Nekuda. You're saying we already use Bechol Shana V'Shana for different things, Right? That it should be the same, uh, that the Mukafim and Prazim shouldn't be the same day. It's Pidush Hamilas. Bechol Shana Vashana means every year, year after year. 
So we're learning from that. What happened last year should be this year, right? Now, yeah. Now, what you can ask a part? What 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 do they have to bring a mechol shana Why can't they just say the argument is he holds ein mavir nala mitzvus and he holds mis lagula? What do you need the bechol? What do you need the bechol shana for? Why does here? I'll tell you why. You're asking. Learn from the Megillah. It says that Haman shows chaydish ne masar who chaydish adar. So if that's the month he chose. We should also choose the twelfth month, which is adarish not adar sheni. Huh? Oh, so I think perhaps maybe that itself you could learn that way, but you can also learn the other way. The fact that the Megillah has to interpret Shneim Osar Hu Chaydish Adar means that the focus is not month 12, the focus is what? Month other. In other words, I don't know. You could say that way, you could say this way. Right, I understand. It's the same 12. It could be 13 also. Huh? Right. No, I'm saying maybe the fact that Megillah interprets and explains it's Chaydish other means that the Nekuda is that it's other, perhaps. Yeah, I hear. No other month. You can't be mad about another month. Huh? What do you need? Bechlal, Bechol, Shana, Vashana? You could just say, Eim Averin, Al Mitzvah, Smith, Mechgula, Legula. What does the Gemara need? Bechol, Shana, Vashana? The Pshat is, Pshat is, without the Bechol, Shana, Vashana, you know what I would say? In a leap year, you should maybe do both. <laughs> do other rishon and other sheni. Do both. Maybe that's the way to do it. Or, or even if not, do both. Do it either. It's open. You want to do put him here? Do it here. You want to do it here? Do it here. Okay, better to do it the first because ain't my virin. But it's optional. Either you have to do both or it's optional. But Chol Shana Vishana teaches me. It has to be like the year before. The year before you only did one put him. <laughs> So now you're also doing one. And it's not optional. One month here, one month there, because it's not like last year put him. It's once you do it. The question is, which one? So he says, What's my logic? Go to other Hasamach Lashvat. And Rabshir Megam Lil says, What am I going to do? I'm going to choose other Hasamach Lanissim. So meaning they're using the same Pasuk, but they're interpreting it in opposite ways. Why? Based on another Svara. So this is very important how machloikas can work. You sometimes see an argument, the same pasik. you learn it this way, I learn it the opposite way. Why? It's not because of the pasik. It's because we have a different mahalik. For him, ein ma'avirin ala mitzvah is more important than mismach gula l'gula. For Rav Shem Amliel, it makes more sense that Anshik Knesset Zagdailah would say, Passover, Adarishan, skip it, don't do Purim then. Why? So that the gula of Mitzrayim and the gula of Haman should be mismach gulagul. Why do you think mismach gulagul is so important? Why should a house, so let's say you take a break for a month. Why is it so important, mismach gulagul? Huh? And if you take a month break, I mean, it's anyway not connected. You do pour it, I mean, you still have a month for Pesach. Okay, cleaning, whatever, this. But it's an interesting thing that the gulagul should be near the gulagul. Huh? Why is it so important, mismach gulagul? Hey, my friend, I'm I understand. You have an opportunity, huh? Ah? What? May what? You're in the mood, huh? You mean because Pesach is also lost in love? The Belazer, um, let's just finish. Another reason. The Belazer, um, the Belazer says, Taimer did Rabshim Ben Gamliel Mehacha. The reason of Rabshim Ben Gamliel is actually another point. And what is this? The Ksiv, the Pasuk says, you know, we'll take a look at the Megillah, it'll be much more Geshmak. Could you mind giving me here the Chumash? You can give everybody just one more reason for Rabshim Ben Gamliel why you do it in other Shani and not in other Rishan. Estepedic test, Pasuk Chaf test. Please turn to page 660. Please turn to page 660. Okay? I want you now to look at something in the Megillah. It's important to see this. Uh, it's important to see this, okay? Take a look. Pasuk Chaf. Perik test Pasuk Chaf. Page 660, okay? 
Vayichtuv Mordechai Sadvarim Ha'elo Vayishlach Svarim Al-Kol Ha'yehudim Rosh HaBacham Adinus HaMelech HaShver Shakrev Barachayikim L'Kayim Aleim Lius Oisim Asim HaBas L'Chir Chodz Ha'im Chabri Chodz Ha'im B'chol Shana V'Shana Right? That was our big Pasuk. Mordechai wrote, uh, wrote down everything and he sent letters, books, to all Jews asking them to observe two days every single year. Beautiful. Pasuk Chav Gimel They accepted it V'Kibbal Ha'yehudim why did they accept it? Okay, beautiful. Hayam emelin is karim venasim. Suddenly, posek chavtes. Vatichtoiv Esther hamalka umordechai ayehudi es kol toikef. Esther and Mordechai wrote the whole story, the whole action, the whole. Rashi says toikef shall nes shall achashver shall haman shall Mordechai shall Esther. They wrote the whole story. Lekayim es higeres hapurim hazois hashenis to observe this letter about Purim, the second letter. Second letter? To observe a sigeris a Purim azois hashenis. And then Pasuk Lamed, they sent letters to all the Jews, 127 country, uh, provinces. Lamed Aleph, lekayim a simei a Purim ha'ela bizmanehem kashikim alei marduchu devesta amalka. And then Pasuk Lamed Beis, which is a very difficult pasuk. Maimar Esther Kiam Divre Apurim Ma'elov and Nichtav Basefer. The words of Esther, he observed the words of Purim, and it was written in a book. We'll see tomorrow what this pasuk means. Beis Rasha. So here, keep it open. The Gemara says, Rebbe Lazar says, the Ksiv Lekayim is Gerus Apurim Azois Hashenis. What's Hashenis? A second letter to observe this letter. What's Hashenis? So he says, Anshe Knesset Sagdoy lament to hint. What's the hint? Sometimes it's going to be a second order. That's what I'm saying. To be Mekayim, Igeris, Apurim. Sometimes the second one, not the first one. That's what he says. Hashenis. Fascinating interpretation. That's where Rabbi Shimon Gamliel got it. Says the Gemara, wait. Okay, so you're canceling out Bechol Shonav Hashanah. Vizich Lemichtav Bechol Shonav Hashanah. Vizich Lemichtav Bechol Shonav Hashanah. You need both Limudin. Why? The e we bechol shana v'shana av aminik kushin. If I would only say bechol shana v'shana, then you have the question of Rebbe Lazar and Rebbe Yosi. Ain ma'avirin ala mitzvus. Who says bechol shana v'shana means before Nissan? Maybe it means after Shvat, because ain ma'avirin ala mitzvus. I miss mechgula legula. You're right, but Rebbe Lazar holds ain ma'avirin ala mitzvus is also a big consideration, and you don't have a good answer for that so much. Kamash malan hashen is. Hashenis is checkmate. Second order, checkmate. Miss Machgula Lagula is right. Vi Yashmin and Hashenis, so just write Hashenis. Hava Minna, Betchila Berishnu Bersheni. Do both. I would say, Lechatchila, you should do Purim, the first order, and the second order. Do both. In other words, not only the first, Hashenis means also the Shenis. Of course, you should do the first order. Why not? Don't think you're Yaitza. Hashem is too. You say, no, Hashem means only the second. How do you know? Maybe it's also the second? How do I know? Right? Kamash Malan, you understand? The Chol Shana Vashana. Every year you don't do two Purims, you do one. So Hashem teaches me which one? Number two, not both. It has to be one. That Bechol Shana Vashana. Frank Dimar, Rebbe Lezer, Rebbe Yosi, Hay Hashem is my Avid Lay. What does Rebbe Lezer do with Hashem? It's a good one. Egeris Hapurim is what does he do? He holds you have to do it only the first month, not the second month. Huh? Me boye le le kid reb shmol by Yehuda, dom reb shmol by Yehuda, bet chila kavua beshushan ula besoyf bechalai lam kulai. He believes in a tradition reb shmol taught that initially there were two Purims, that initially they established Purim only for the Jews of Shushan, because that's where. The action was, at the end, for Jews in the whole world. So he says, that's Pshat, there was a Geris HaPurim Hashenis, it was a second letter. In other words, there were two letters. The first letter was about Purim in Shushan. The second letter was Purim in the rest of the world. Two separate letters. Huh? What? No, Rashi doesn't say that. Rashi says, Lashana Ashniya Khazru Vishal Khusfam Shiasapurim. Rashi in the he doesn't say that. Rashi in the Megillah says that the second year they sent books again, letters again to do Purim. 
That's what he says. He doesn't make that difference. And I'll tell you the big problem here. I'm going to leave you with a question. If you have an answer, please. Take a look at the first letters. Pasuk Chaf. First letters. This is the second one is for the whole world, right? First one is for Shushan, right? Take a look at the first one. Pasuk Chaf. Vayichtav Mordechai Sadvarim Ha'ela. Vayishlach Svarim. Read. El kol ha-yuhudim. Asher bechol medinis ha-malach ha-shmedish. Ha-kroivim ve-horechoikim. This is called only Shushan. Rabbi said, this is called only Shushan. All Jews in all the countries, far and close, if you didn't, if you didn't hear the first time, L'kayim aleim li'as oisim. And they accepted it. Pasuk chavtes, Igeris hapurim ha-shen. Yisrael Shmuel says, it was two different letters. First letter was for Shushan. Second letter was for the whole world. In the first time it says the whole world. The second time it doesn't say the whole world. <laughs> huh? Interesting. What's Pshan? How can he learn it like this? It's his homework. No, it says, Al Yehudim Bechal Medinais. You're saying Rechaikim in Shushan. In Shushan. But I'm saying, but the first time it says Bechal Medinais. So it's not only Shushan. Ah, they notified everybody about Shushan. Ah. He said they notified everybody about Shushan. But it says, L'kayim aleyem, L'kayim aleyem li'as oisim, no? Just homework. You understood? What did they accept? The Shushan's... What now? That, but it says that they should observe, L'kayim aleyem, no? They should celebrate... You would think that it happened in the Nakash Bayrish land, so everywhere it's going to take effect. No! I claim that even though he dominated everywhere, it's only in Shushan that we're going to have. That's the kind of thing. Which is the kind of thing? Lias Oisim, no? Lias Oisim. Lias Oisim, Shushan. Oh, I don't know. It's Lachayda Pel. Yeah. yeah. No, no, we need an answer. This is just homework. Huh? What did Rashi say when he said the wrote the first <laughs> So Rashi in the Megillah, Takataich's Hashain is very different. He says Hashain is. Oh, Vayicht of Mordechai in Pasuk Chaf, he a Megillah has always kemois shehi. He wrote this on Megillah, the Megillah as is. Our Megillah's Esther, Mordechai wrote. He wrote the Megillah and he wrote this Pasuk in the Megillah. <laughs> he wrote in the Megillah that he wrote the Megillah. No, the second one, Vatikht of Esther Hamalka. Oh, you want to know why the Pasuk Chaf it's only Mardachai and the Pasuk Chaf Tes both write the Megillah? That's a good question. Why the first one it's only Mardachai writes the Megillah and the second one Esther writes? Not only that, the second time it says Esther first. <laughs> It says Esther first. First time she's not mentioned. And the Megillah is called Megillah's Esther, not Megillah's Mardachai Esther. It seems like they were changing something, or like it was the second version. You have to know. What's the difference of Chaf and Chavtes? And Chaf, it's Mardachai writing the Megillah, and Chavtes, it's both of them writing the Megillah. Good to Shaila. Good to Shaila. Okay. Why would Al-Shakir put everything for him? Shaila, this means Chaf, this is clear. The whole Torah Shabbat is full of hiddenness. You want to know why it's hidden? The whole Torah Shabbat is written that way, no? Well, to have every single law specified in Torah would be impossible. So that's why you have everything hinted in one way or another. Huh? The Chol Shana is one way. Hashem is. Takrib Shem Gamliel doesn't learn Hashem is this way. Apparently he doesn't hold that there was a difference of Shushan and the rest of the world. He holds Hashem is the second other. And now we have a third interpretation in Hashanis in Rashi. He says Hashanis is the second year they sent letters again. There was the first year they sent letters after the event, and then the second year they sent letters. You know, we want this to become established. Reminder, yeah. I'm saying in the Megillah, Rashi has a mamish, a different interpretation on Hashanis, not other Shani, and not Hashanis, it was for the whole world. Hashanis means the second year. He gave us a put a second set of letters, not for the whole world, the second year around. Unless you say that this Rashi and this Gemara do work together, you have to think about it. Maybe they thought it was only the first to hear Purim, and then they had to say, he says, no, it's going to be the Well, that's what Rashi is saying. 
people would think, look, we had a, a, a Yeshua. I hear. Sayata de Shmaya. The Torah is Yagato Matsosa Tamen. Maso Maton. Yagia, sometimes you could sit 20 hours in the office and garnish it. Sayata de Shmaya, the Hashem's help for Parnas. I feel a Torah, the Ukme Girsa, that it should stay by you. You also need Sayata de Shmaya. It's not enough. I heard of it. I heard of it. The Torah should stay by you. You need Sayata de Shmaya. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.